This is a surgical video demonstrating the removal of a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor from the right upper extremity. The authors of this video certify that they have no commercial associations that might pose a conflict of interest in association with this presentation. All medications and devices were FDA approved. The patient was a 47-year-old female who presented with a painful enlarging mass of the right upper arm. At the time, she had full use of the right hand without any swelling distal to the mass and denied any neurological symptoms such as tingling or numbness. Four months prior to surgery, an MRI of the arm revealed a large, well-circumscribed soft tissue mass at the medial aspect of the superior to mid-upper arm. The mass measured 7 by 9 by 13 centimeters. There were central areas of hypoenhancement which could represent areas of necrosis. The mass abutted the brachial artery. There was a mass effect on the proximal long head of the biceps tendon with displacement laterally. There was no intraosseous extension of the soft tissue mass. The patient then underwent a core needle biopsy in the office which confirmed a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor. Therefore, it was recommended that the patient receive chemotherapy and radiation for two months before deciding on further treatment. After two months, the MRI showed that the mass slightly shrunk and had decreased areas of enhancement compatible with progressive necrosis and a strong response to the chemotherapy and radiation. There was no evidence of metastatic disease and a limb-sparing radical resection of the tumor was now recommended. According to Moretti et al., malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors are rare sarcomas often associated with neurofibromatosis type 1. Multimodality treatment with chemotherapy and radiation prior to pursuing radical resection may increase the disease-free survival rates in patients with these rare tumors. The patient was brought into the operating room and general anesthesia was administered. We placed the patient in a supine position and draped around the right arm. The right arm was marked appropriately and a timeout was performed. An extended delta pectoral incision was created that would allow us access to the brachial plexus proximal and distal to the area of the tumor. The incision carried inferiorly along the medial border of the mass, extending down distally to the elbow joint along the medial side of the arm. Here we have opened up our skin incision. Distal to the area of the tumor, we have exposed our neurovascular structures. This is our median nerve. Here are our brachial blood vessels and our lateral antebrachial cutaneous nerve. We have dissected these free up to the level of the tumor in this location. We will then work from both proximal to distal and distal to proximal to meticulously dissect the tumor from the underlying neurovascular structures. Here we have raised the medial and lateral skin flaps leaving the underlying fascia intact around the mass to expose the entire perimeter of the mass. Now we will release the pectoralis major muscle from its insertion so that we can gain access to the axilla. We can see the neurovascular structures running deep to the tumor and a well-preserved fascia layer on top of the tumor. There also appears to be a clear surgical plane between the long head of the biceps and the mass and this plane was developed. We have released the pectoralis major from its insertion. Here is the deltoid, here is the short head of the biceps attached to the coracoid, up here is the pectoralis minor attaching to the coracoid as well. To release the pectoralis minor, we need to identify the musculocutaneous nerve in this interval here between the two muscles as it passes just distal to the coracoid. Once that is protected, we can release these muscles from their insertion and this will allow the tumor to be much more mobile. Following the neurovascular structures posteriorly, you can see where the median nerve is running posterior to the tumor here. We are going to dissect out all these neurovascular structures and then excise or resect whatever is necessary. We have now developed our interval here between the pectoralis minor and the short head of the biceps. The first nerve we identified is the musculocutaneous nerve which will traverse this area and supply the lateral long head and the brachialis muscle. We see here that the lateral cord divides into the musculocutaneous nerve and sends a branch to the median nerve. We see here that both the medial cord 
and lateral cord come together to form our median nerve. The next step is to release the short head of the biceps from its location. We have dissected all of the neurovascular structures from the tumor. Starting first with the median nerve, we surrounded the nerve with the vessel loop and dissected the nerve from the tumor. Similarly, we identified, surrounded, and dissected the brachial artery and vein from the tumor. We also identified the deep humeral vessels passing in the quadrangular space distal to the latissimus. The adhesions between these and the mass were lysed. The radial nerve was identified from arising from the posterior cord and meticulously dissected down to the quadrangular space and separated from the tumor. The ulnar nerve was identified arising from the medial cord of the brachial plexus and meticulously dissected up to where it passed into the triceps. We can see here the humeral head and rotator cuff insertion. These are the anterior humeral circumflex vessels. The axillary nerve is passing into the triangular space here. This is the latissimus dorsi muscle inserting on the humerus, and this is the brachialis muscle. Clearly, the musculocutaneous nerve is going right through the center of the mass. The mass is also involving both the short and long heads of the biceps muscle. Given this is a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor, it is probably coming from the musculocutaneous nerve, and we had no other option but to remove it. It would not make sense to try and preserve the long head of the biceps if we could not preserve the musculocutaneous nerve. According to Bendersky et al., the brachialis muscle in most people also receives dual innervation from the radial nerve in addition to the musculocutaneous nerve. So a brachialis and brachioradialis should continue to work and flex the elbow after surgery. Next, we will ligate and transect the musculocutaneous nerve both superiorly where it comes from the lateral cord and distal to the tumor. The long head of the biceps was traced to the bicipital groove and released from its insertion utilizing Metzenbaum scissors. Here we have the musculocutaneous nerve that we took from its origin. We then tied off the musculocutaneous nerve and the medial and lateral antibrachial cutaneous nerves with zero silk ties and transected them. The mass was then placed on traction with the biceps and the biceps was transected at the elbow crease. This accomplished the radical resection. Multiple margins from around the tumor were found to be negative. This is the deep surface of the specimen. Here is the long head of the biceps, and here is the confluence of the short head and the long head. Here is the musculocutaneous nerve entering into the mass, and we can see that squeezing the nerve causes the muscle to contract. Here we have repaired the pectoralis major tendon back to its insertion on the lateral humerus using Mason Allen sutures. Then we repaired the delto pectoral interval with some simple interrupted ethabon sutures. Now we will close the wound with some deep stitches in the fascia and place a 15 Blake drain as well. Extra skin was removed in a manner that would allow the skin incision to lie on the medial side of the arm. Two O monocryl sutures were used for the subcutaneous tissue, three O monocryl sutures were used for the subcuticular tissue, and finally several vertical mattress nylon sutures were used for closure. The patient tolerated the procedure well and went to recovery in stable condition. Four months after the surgery, MRI demonstrated no recurrent soft tissue mass. Presently, the patient is still recovering well and will continue physical therapy. The plan is for her to undergo an MRI in four months to monitor for reoccurrence.